There was one crime which could virtually guarantee your execution in medieval England, Tudor England and in the following centuries. When we consider why people were publicly executed during this time, we mostly think of the most serious crimes. That the condemned must have been a convicted murderer or arsonist, or that they were sentenced to death by orders of the king. Many people were executed for treason, but there was a crime which didn't physically involve causing harm to anyone, that could be considered just as terrible. Coin clipping was one way for someone to guarantee their execution, and it was considered at the time stealing virtually straight from the pockets of the monarchy. So join us today as we look at this crime, and remember to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Coin clipping was a widespread practice inside of the Middle Ages, and many people did this to try and hold back some currency, and to try and hold some wealth. It was a serious offence and was a capital crime, and it involved cutting small pieces from coins. Coins were once made from pure gold and silver, and they were subject to wear. It was normal for people to receive coins that were not perfectly round, or that appeared bigger than was required. Because of this, people began to cut off and file off a small amount of the precious metal, as it would go unnoticed. These cut off pieces could then be smelted into a bar of either gold or silver, and then would be sold to a goldsmith, or was used to make counterfeit coins. This was a huge problem in England, and was considered high treason and punishable by death. Everyone indulged in it, however it resulted in large-scale executions and persecutions. On the 17th of November 1278, Edward I ordered the arrest of all the Jews in England, based upon searches of their homes, as they were suspected of coin clipping and counterfeiting money. Eventually, 680 Jews were arrested and were taken to the Tower of London, and in 1279, over 300 of these were executed for the crime of coin clipping. This was estimated too to have been around 10% of all the Jews in England. At the time, many raids took place, and more were rounded up following their homes being ransacked. This persecution was based around the crime of coin clipping. Coins that had been clipped contained less precious metal than they should have, and they weighed less. This meant that shopkeepers weighed coins to check the true value, and as the centuries continued, the problem persisted. Different monarchs released different coins to commemorate their reigns, but the coin clippers were deemed to be stealing from the king or queen's own pockets, as the currency was deemed to be their property. The problem continued into the 1600s, and the crime was such an issue that public hangings were used commonly to deter criminals. The threat of hanging did not put them off, as clipping was profitable, and using the simplest tools could mean that even the poor could benefit. Defacing the coins of the realm usually resulted in men being hanged, drawn and quartered, and women were hanged, and in some cases even burned, but they were not put off. It was well-organised crime, and one woman, for example, had a network of clippers who established a business where she would pay poorer people money for an amount of clip coins. She ultimately was burned to death. The Royal Mint brought in different things to stop clipping, for example using machines to make ridges around the edge of the coin, and to engrave right up to the edge. The use of precious metals gave people the incentive to do it, but once the metals were changed to make coins using less valuable materials, this deterred the clippers. In 1692 in London, there were over 300 clippers working, and it was estimated that there were a hundred people working inside of a clipping gang that brought in £6,000 a month. In modern day, this would be a monthly wage of around £600,000, split between a hundred people, which was an incredible amount of money at the time. One clipper even tried to buy his pardon for £6,000, and many were arrested with hundreds of pounds in their possession. Many coin clippers were placed in prison to await their executions, and in London many were placed in Newgate Prison. The conditions here were rather harsh and tough, with disease and overcrowding at the time a real issue. So one way of guaranteeing a death sentence over the centuries was by defacing coins and clipping valuable metal shards from them to be melted down. Interestingly, Sir Isaac Newton was even the warder of the mint, and it was his job to interview criminals and informers to stop clipping gangs. 
it was estimated that during his time, one in ten circulating coins was forged, and even more were clipped, and this was a huge problem that thankfully isn't around today. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.